Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's been a quiet morning. So, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, retail in this country. I think it's one of the oldest cultures, not only in the country, but, but I would guess globally. We talk about cultures, we talk about traditions. I think retail started age-old tradition of barter. Retail was always there. It's barter. It's evolved. The beauty about retail is that the landscape in India keeps evolving. It's, it's, it's been there between products, categories, formats, structures, logistics, I think the entire, the product itself. So I think the whole thing has been evolving at a very, very fast pace. The beauty, beauty about India, India is an extremely resilient, we have been very, very resilient with all the changes that's, that, that has been happening. You know, we've seen good times, we've seen changes, we spoke about high streets converting, we see, we see mall developments happening. There is a lot that has been evolving in the country. The economies have been changing, product categories have been changing from homegrown brands to international brands, from mono, mono stores to large formats, departmental stores, supermarkets. And in all this, there has been a lot of uh, there, there have been lots of ups and downs, if I may call, call it. The beauty is that India, because of its internal resources, because of the country that we are, and the kind of commitments that we have, uh, lastly to talk about the kind of innovations, the kind of effort that has been put in, the entire business has been evolving. Now, what's, what's really happening? See, uh, no way, so when we see, in the last three to five years, Dominantly, there is a lot of investment, there is a lot of interest, there has a lot of been exposure on travel. Travel is not the way it was 10, 15 years back. Today, travel is easy, travel is welcoming. It did have a blip two, three years, but then I think it's back. One is travel. The second thing we are talking about is loyalty. The entire, you know, few years back, loyalty cards used to be only about points. Now that remains. It's everyone wants to be gratified. Uh, Everyone wants to be gratified, but I think loyalty is growing beyond, beyond, beyond loyalty points to relationships, engagements, value additions. We've also seen a lot of uh, data analytics coming in. You know, the beauty about data and analytics and the way we've adapted with all the new technologies is there is ambiguity in our business. You know, there is, there is a science about it. There is ambiguity in the business, now, and that's the beauty of data. The more ambiguity we deal with, I think data analytics deep dives. You know, we are talking of times when footfalls used to be counted by tickers, maybe on registers, few years, 10 years, 20 years back. Today, the level of, the level of data analytics and deep dive we have to understand consumer moving, movement patterns, I think all this is a brilliant effort, and, and, and it just keeps getting better. We've also seen consumers. Now, now, if you see consumers and our relationship with the consumers, see today consumers are not only walking out in the stores or in the malls or any retail establishment only to shop. Shopping is a basic need. I think we want to buy something, we want to engage with something, we want to have a meal, we have a co coffee. Now imagine the coffee culture in this country. Coffee stores, coffee shops have become places of engagement and we all know about it. But see the way it is evolving and it just keeps getting better, right? The number of, the kind of experiences that we deliver in food retail is absolutely amazing. I mean, obviously to eat is a basic need, but I think what we really value today is where are we going, how are, the, the plating becomes important, the experience becomes important. Most important, the people and the way people uh, treat us becomes important. So I think there are little, little ingredients that are just, just, just that just keeps adding on to this retail journey. Now, now, there, there's, there's another thing which is really evolved, influencers. Now, let's go back to few years again, and I'm sorry, you're keeping going back for the, for the journey of evolution. See, few years, our influence used to be our people around us, right? We had friends, we had family members, and they were our real influencers. Now, this, today, what's happening with, with this complete, with, with so many brands coming in, so many experiences coming in, 
And I think we have time, time is a little short. We really need someone to tell us what's great. While we are all exposed, consumers are exposed. Today, information, there is information, people know what, what is trending, people are internationally traveling, they are completely exposed to what is happening. But influencers are becoming a big part to guide us, guide this entire retail journey between product to consumer. Now, a little, a little thing on what's happening on the retail spaces. You know, there, is, there seems to be a lot more that is getting added into mall spaces, right? Uh, metros, mini metros, even smaller towns. So there is a lot that will still, keep, still keep getting added. It just shows the kind of, kind of confidence that the economy has, the consumers have, and the real estate business has in investing into future projects. What's changing? So I guess 10% of the GDP, 8% of employment happens in retail. That itself is huge to talk about. And it just keeps getting better and bigger. Entertainment. Now, entertainment, it is, you know, as, as I was speaking a, a minute earlier, see, entertainment is not about just getting into an entertainment zone. That's there. You know, we have, we have digital and we have non-digital. There are kids, there are, uh, all of us get, we are all of us. I, I think half of the people here would be involved in gaming. Now, entertainment is not just about, we want to be entertainment when we walk into a mall. You don't want to go, go to a store or a mall and just walk in and walk out. You want to be engaged. You want to, you want to spend time there. You want your journey to be memorable. Uh, work and education. Now, now, we've got into the culture of work from home, right? At the same time, what has also happened is, uh, with, with the entire online thing and the digitization and so much of technology and apps, there's an evident need to upskill the talent that we deal with. Now, the, we have a talent across, right from the front end stores, right till the back end. We have uh, technology in supply chain management, we have technology in front end selling, product management, product creation. There's a definitely evident need and a lot seems to be happening on upskilling the talent. Health, as we all know, there's a lot of sensitivity. The athleisure business is growing for good. There are more people who are engaging in health equipment, home gyms, people being sensitive about being healthy. And I think it's great to see the entire retail fraternity investing a lot in making the place safe and healthier. So the business model keeps evolving. And see, with all these changes, the business model is evolving. Uh, we all know, and I think everyone in this room would, would agree, that all of us have spent considerable time in evolving our business models, be it product, be it store sizes, be it uh, mall experiences, store experiences, technologies, accounting, supply chain, every bit. Uh, now the, another interesting fact is, Consumers. Now, consumers do not just want to come and shop. One thing is very clear. Consumers want to engage with brands or they want to engage more with brands or prefer brands who are there for a purpose. Sustainability is one big thing that, that, that comes out. And there's a lot more. People want, people associate, especially, especially the younger generation, they associate more with brands that that, that, are, that have purpose, that have a meaning, just beyond, they go beyond business. So, you know, it's, 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 sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think that's what we do. There, there are, see, there are consumer needs. Now, if, if we look at certain brands, sorry. Yeah. So, if we look at certain brands, what, what is happening? There are some brands who stand for sustainability. There are some brands who spend, who, who, who really make efforts about reducing the carbon footprint. There are some people who are extremely sensitive about waste management, reducing carbon footprints, sustainable products. So I think there is a lot that is happening in the retail in terms of all efforts about, evolution is not about p &Ls. that's obviously the base of business, Evolution is not just about product creation. It is a lot more uh, 
also what's happening is our 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 engagement with the consumer and our engagement with our retail partners or our business partners i think it's more empathetic it's more inclusive the other change that has happened the other change that has happened is the the entire cohesiveness cohesiveness of brick and mortar and online i think that's another brilliant move that's happening we've all understood that both have to go hand in hand evolution of brick and mortar it's going to remain online definitely offers its own experiences so i think both these business go hand in hand and are continue to evolve as dlf just the last one as dlf we keep customers at the center of our decisions we are close to our consumers and we are committed to do what the consumers what, what the uh, what the consumers look at thank you